and my mate Stevie Whale, who was in the business, has just been on the point, did a bit of work. With. Gary, looking at your long CV, one of the things I noticed going back to the 70s is, is espousing bands such as, which to me are very dear, bands like Crass and things like that. Espousing them? Espousing Crass. Well, I fell out of them a bit, <laughs> Crass. Um, I, I think I was the first person to review Crass. Uh, was it the Feed of the 5000, the first, yeah. the first EP, when that came out, I reviewed it. And I, I, I didn't give it a bad review at all. I, I sort of took the mickey gently out of some of the, uh, cap, the spelling because it was all like uh, capital letters, wasn't it? It was all screaming at you. Um, and some of, the, some of the music was a little bit impenetrable. I think I said that and it sent the send old Penny Rimbaud into a, into a bit of a... <laughs> into a bit of a state. So he then re re replied by writing that song, um, Hurry Up Gary, the Parsons Farted, <laughs> which had to go at me and Tony Farsons. So, but neither of us, when you look back at what we actually wrote, were that hostile to him. I think we took the mickey out of them being hippies and living in a commune, that was pretty good. Oh, I see. And for people in the, at that time who like, read NME, so you either read NME or you read Sounds, you yeah. couldn't do both. Did, it, did you get that feeling? There was a lot of rivalry between NME and Sounds, and, and the, the feeling was that NME was more the student paper, whereas Sounds was more for people who were actually working for them and going to gigs, and that was, that was pretty much a divide. So we were, Sounds would cover, I mean, look, whereas the NME had Paul Morley and, uh, uh, I'm trying to think his name, Ian something, Ian, Penman, and yeah. they, it was like trying to read some thesis, wasn't it? It was like a big dis dissertation on nothingness. Um, whereas we were going out and uh, we were we were covering stuff that was actually happening. So I was there doing the first, for example, when Two Tone started, I was doing Two Tone. When New Wave of Every Brit British Heavy Metal started, I was doing that. New Mod in '79, I was there. Oh yeah, and all that, everything that come along, I was doing. Because there was elements of punk in which I think Paul, Paul Weller once said, "Why didn't you go hang around with the punk lot?" It's just because they wouldn't let me in. You yeah, there's right. an element of that, a middle-class element. Well, a lot of the early punk bands, and I do adore them all, I'm not knocking the, those early punk bands because the music will live on forever, having been of that age, but uh, um, a lot of them were going on about uh, tower blocks and being the voice of the streets and all that, when in fact they were all art students, or, and in Joe Strummer's case, who, I, again, I love Joe Strummer, but he, he was the son of a diplomat and he was singing about white riots while living in a white mansion over in... Uh, in West London, you think, oh, do <laughs> So Daddy was a punk rock and her Daddy was a bit of a that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. After that, the Oi scene, how did you get into the Oi scene? Well, the Cockney Rejects, who were the band out of Custom House, Kenny Town, um, they approached me uh, initially and then asked with their tape, which I really liked, uh, it was the Flares and Slippers um, Police Car, yeah, yeah, which is yeah. just in their demo version. Uh, and I think I've, I've played it in the office and it caught on in the office a lot, and they went and did their debut EP, they did it with um, Pete, who did the crash stuff as well, at Small Wonder, Pete Stennett. Um, and then they asked me to manage them. So I then, I thought, well, why not have a go at managing them? And I managed to get them um, a deal, I got them a deal with EMI, a uh, five album deal I think it was, um, got Jimmy Percy producing them, uh, and then I thought, well I've got to decide now, do I want to be a writer or do I want to be a manager? And sometimes I wonder now how my life would have been different if I decided to try managing, but at the time I decided to stay doing what I knew I was good at. <laughs> do you think that somehow someone like the Oi scene and a lot of other music, was hi a lot of people was hijacked by the right wing? Well, not really, because there was a lot of trouble with the right wing, um, around anyway, and there was a, um, uh, you know, Sham 69 were destroyed by the British movement in London. Um, and a, a lot of bands were attacked by them, like the Ruts. Uh, but they were, it was a reign of terror, really. And the US scene never had any of that element. Well, they never had any trouble from that element at all. The only trouble we had at the early gigs in London were, was football-related. Obviously, the rejects been fanatically West Ham. Um, and the political thing came as a bit of a surprise, really. It was all, so, I know it sounds terrible now, and I can't believe it, it was all circumstantial. And as soon as we had that reputation, basically the Daily Mail wrote a piece which was libelous about everyone, um, and we sued. Uh, and we did everything in our power to say we're not like that. I think the third carry on, uh, the third oil, oil album which I compiled was Carry On Away, which was dedicated to the spirit of Shea Guevara and Sid James. And if you look at Strength for Oil, even on that, you know, it's dedicated to a lot of Black Hat, uh, Eric uh, Alcott, and then all sculpture people like that. And, uh, there's nothing dodgy about the album apart from the unfortunate identity of the person who was the cover, uh, on the cover of it. Going into your journalism and things like pushing on the box, yeah. 
what's been a typical reaction in your post bag, so to speak, you know, from stuff you've written? For, from readers, it's normally, it's normally very good. It's, it's the people are upset. It's not quite so good, you know. It's a, obviously, had a few feuds over the years with you know, various, uh, various people. And, and I guess talking about um, journalism, you're, you're never, you're always happy to shoot from the hip and have an opinion. Yeah. Which recent business about phone hacking? Um, what's your thoughts on that? My thought is really that if the phone hacking had actually uncovered a decent story, if it had been like a Watergate or something like that, then no one would be moaning about it. Everyone would see it as a great thing. If, if some real genuine scandal had been uncovered, uh, the fact is all been soap soaps, shaking you know, and footballers and that, yes, it will really, why bother all that? Um, I think my own view is that the papers themselves are now trying to downplay the extent it was happening because I can tell you from my own knowledge that it was, it was absolutely widespread throughout all the Sunday Red Sox. It wasn't just the news of the world, the people, the editor of the people was doing it. The Sunday Mirror uh, uh, entertainment correspondents were doing it. But, you know, it was a, absolutely a, um, the practice of the day. Uh, so, um, it's, it's all, they've all been a bit disingenuous now to try and say, it was, uh, try and distance himself from it. Oh, it was a one-off thing. No, it was... just different plays here on Thorak Lake. So, do you have any memories of Thorak? Um, I uh, spent... I, have, I was living at South Ockenden. Fullerton Crescent, 25 Fullerton Crescent, for in the in the early 80s, about 84, 85, around about that time. And I have got good memories of um, of, uh, of South Ockenden, apart from one day when I had found myself raided by the police. Well, not just raided by the police, visited by the local CID, and they wanted to look round the house. I said, well, by all means, but what are you looking for? And they wouldn't tell me. And they're looking behind the settee, they're looking under the stairs, they're looking under the bed. So what are you looking for? And in there, they told me, Motorhead stage bomber had been stolen. And someone had told them that I had it. Now, Motorhead stage bomb had a 20-foot wingspan. <laughs> so I said, well, why are you looking under the bed? He said, you could have dismantled it. <laughs> so the bed would have been up, yeah. um, uh, They then asked if I had any outbuildings. And I said, well, I've got a garage. And I went around and looked at the garage. And you could see him thinking, it's in the garage. Oh, no, we got him now, it's in the garage. Ooh. When they did open it, of course, all that was in there was my little girl's tricycle. So there was, uh, that, they said they'd get back to me. I never heard another word. Even just speaking now, your life seems to be full of rich anecdotes. Is that what motivated you to write the book? I wanted to get it all down uh, while I could still remember them, because obviously with age you get more and more forgetful. But also because I got a bit fed up with um, seeing a version of myself in The Guardian, for example, which wasn't me. And I think, well, I'm fed up with this, because there's people who think I'm, I'm some terrible bigoted person, and I'm not. So I went, this is who I am, this is what I've done, this is what I really believe in. Put it all down in paper. And again, talk about that, that bigotry. I mean, you put some videos on YouTube about, about democracy and English democracy. Yeah. You strongly believe that you can be proud of your country as a Scotsman, an Irishman, a Welshman, a Cornishman, a Breton, and also be proud of England. Isn't that true? Absolutely right. I mean, I don't even know why people say that's a right wing thing. I think it's the opposite of a right wing thing because if you look at something like I, I stood for the English Democrats, I'm not a member of any party, but I stood for them on the basis of um, campaigning for an English parliament. And you think, well, we're campaigning for more democracy, we're campaigning for. Um, of English civil rights, Bill of Rights and stuff like that. How can anyone say that's a right-wing thing? Surely that's a progressive thing to, 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 to want to campaign for. Brilliant. Thanks, Gary.